Hello again, everybody. Um, oh. There we go. All right. Hello again. For this session, we are going to learn how to start lifting because I find that a lot of people, they want to be in the weight room. They want to become strong. They want to build muscle. They want to get toned, but they just don't quite know how to get started. And going to the weight room can be very intimidating because you feel dumb because you don't know what you're doing. There's other people around. Some people might be looking at you. So uh, I'm going to try to figure out or I'm going to try and lay out a way for you guys to get started and to develop a good habit and then to eventually work your way into the weight room. So again, make sure you ask questions if you have them and I will answer those as we go. So we're learning to lift here and the one of the things that you want to get started with is you need to start somewhere. A lot of times we think that uh, well, you know, uh, I need to lift a lot in order to get started or you think that you need to really put a lot of time in, but my suggestion would be make it ridiculously easy, like so easy that it almost seems like a joke to even start doing. That's, that's my best recommendation because when you get into a rut where you're not exercising or you're not lifting, it's easy to continue that. And so in order to start getting out of that, make it super simple. So if, if I was, uh, suggesting something to get started make just a, a really easy workout so we're only so you wake up in the morning or before you go to bed or whenever you just do 10 push-ups just one set of that then you do 10 lunges 15 crunches 10 supermans i mean this will take you what maybe maybe two minutes maybe a little bit longer so if you start doing that your first week the good news about starting out any type of exercise routine is that you actually make huge gains right away and you don't have to do a whole lot to get those gains. So um, if I throw up this chart right here, this is a chart looking at strength gains uh, as you get started. So most of the time when people start lifting, they're looking for muscle mass. And if we see on this chart, it says hypertrophy down there on the bottom. This is you building muscle mass. Your hypertrophy doesn't actually begin for a few weeks. So there's no point to go super hard right away but you're gonna make huge gains in your neural adaptation and your strength, which is kind of your electrical system that allows you to fire your muscles at a higher intensity, which allows you to move more weight. So right away, we just need to get started doing something super easy and start getting used to your new workload, I guess, how we'll call it. So, so like I said, and you only have to do one set, right? And maybe if you did this two times that week, maybe three times that week, and if you can handle that, if you did this workout, if you're doing nothing and you did this workout three times a week, one set for a month, you are gonna be way stronger than doing absolutely nothing. And you're gonna probably surprise yourself with how, how much stronger you get just from something really tiny like this. So let's say you do that for the first week and you wanna maybe uh, advance a little bit. This next week, maybe you do two sets. So you do push-ups, lunges, crunches, supermans, start back at the top, push-ups, lunges, crunches, supermans, then you're done. Right, so again, that'll take you like four minutes. So now you're up to four minutes of work on that second week and you do times two the whole way down. And then week three, you know you can go up to three sets. So now you're maybe doing six to eight, you might need a little extra rest, minutes per day, three days a week. Again, it's not meeting the recommendations for exercise, but it's better to have a tiny amount of exercise than to have no exercise. And if you did this, three sets for you know three weeks, maybe repeat that for your fourth week, you are gonna be way stronger. If you could do 10 push-ups normally before, maybe struggling, you'll probably be able to do 15 or 20 uh, that quickly because your gains, again, are huge when you're just beginning. So um, now let's maybe think about step two. You're only doing four lifts here, so what I would do is, and you know, these might get a little old after a while, so you wanna find some way to switch things up. So you could look up maybe some ab sets and because uh, people love to do ab sets and it's better than nothing. I mean, abs are a little overrated in my opinion. They do look good, but as far as like functionality goes, they're a little overrated. Um, but you know, maybe you did this workout, maybe you did this workout two times that week, two sets, and then you did one ab set, right? That's a good, that's a good uh, daily or weekly routine. You could add yoga to this as well. Uh, what I would actually recommend is maybe adding two or three exercises to this. So maybe look up some new things that you want to try and just plus one, you know, maybe you want to do, uh, let's say, calf raises. 
So, you know, slowly build this and just start at home because a lot of times people don't start lifting because they're too worried to go to the gym. Right now you're stuck at home anyways, so you might as well get started there. Um, so that'd be my kind of recommendation, slowly build this up and maybe do, you know, this up here, something nice and easy for one month. And then once you get used to that and you're getting your routine down, maybe do your second step here where you're adding some lifts, you're maybe doing some yoga, maybe doing some ab sets, and do that for another month. So one plus month. There we go. So now you, if you did this, you'd already have two months under your belt and you're going to be feeling really good. You're going to start looking better as well. One of the things when people start lifting is your results are very slow to happen. So uh, if you want, you could do before and after shots, right? Because sometimes you, you slowly get used to how you're improving so you don't notice huge gains typically. And so uh, if you were interested in that, you do like a before shot, right? And then in my opinion, you want to lift or exercise, right, for about four months until you kind of reevaluate yourself because those visual looks sometimes are slower and because you're slowly changing over time, your brain doesn't recognize a huge change right away. Um, but after about four months, you'll look back and you'll be like, wow, I'm feeling way better, I'm looking way better. So, you know, take it slow and just commit to a certain amount of time because eventually you're gonna start to see really good changes. Um, okay, so that's kind of the beginning phase. I'm gonna show you two workouts that I created during another one of these videos, just because these are some really good at home workouts. And so you can just take a screenshot or jump back to this video if you wanna see these workouts. But these are good, well-rounded at home workouts. And if you did three by 10, maybe that second month, and you threw these in there, changed them up a little bit, right, try out some new things, uh, you would be feeling really good, really strong after, after a month or two months of doing that. So. Okay, let's move on to step three. Actually, I got some questions. Let's, let's go over those real quick. If you were lifting a lot before for four months, a lot before for months, heavy lifting, but haven't had the time recently, would it, best, would it be best to basically start over with workouts from home? Well, right now, definitely, because you can't go to a gym anyways. So, uh, yeah, but I would recommend just starting back from from the baseline because you're gonna still, you, you're gonna lose some, although the good part is strength gains tend to stick around quite a lot, uh, or better than cardio gains, I guess. Uh, so yeah, just doing something and doing a little bit even at home is gonna maintain those gains that you've already had. So yeah, I would recommend doing a little something just to keep that stimulus up. Uh, do you prefer compound lifts or isolation work? Why? Great question. Okay, so a compound lift, let me get a sheet here. Compound lift is when you're moving two joints or more. So compound lift. And if we're thinking about squats, let me draw up a human here. That's actually not too bad. Let's make these some front squats. There's a bar right here, all right, coming out. Anyways, so when you're thinking about compound squats, how many joints are moving? So here you have your hips moving, you got your knees moving, and you got your ankles moving. So this would be a compound lift. An isolated lift would be like bicep curls. So you got your arm right there, dumbbell in hand, and then push your shoulder. But you're really only moving one joint there. I mean, you could, you're could you not really moving your wrist, right? So it's one joint there. If you were going to do a press afterwards, so then you press that dumbbell over your head, right, with that arm, Draw a little human. Then that kind of turns into a compound lift. So uh, there's a room for both. I like compound lifts because, uh, especially if you're doing heavy compound lifts, you're going to increase your testosterone release and that's like, uh, that's gonna help you grow and help you build that muscle. So I do think you should be doing, doing compound lifts. Plus they, they replicate the real world really well. They teach good form. If you do it properly, take your time learning form. I don't have time to explain it in this video, um, but there's plenty of resources online. And uh, yeah, start working these in. And then for your isolation movements, that's like I said here, that's for like developing just that muscle. So I'll do that a lot with my hamstrings because my hamstrings tend to be a little bit weaker than uh, my quads, for instance. And so I like to isolate my hamstrings and get those some work, but I also do compound stuff. So a good combination is what I suggest. 
What is the best thing to eat after lifting? All right, let's talk about nutrition real quick. So once you get done with lifting, you wanna reward yourself some way. So find something that you really enjoy, like a tasty little treat. And what you wanna find in that is you wanna have protein plus carbohydrates. So the reason why we want protein is we need to rebuild our muscle because when you're lifting, what you're doing is muscle damage and you're actually getting stronger during this recovery process. So right after you eat or right after you lift within 30 minutes, you want to eat some kind of protein and some kind of carbs. So uh, the reason why you do carbs is because during that exercise, you store carbohydrates in your muscle cells and you're using those. And you need to replace those, otherwise your body's going to find carbs elsewhere. Sometimes it can break down muscle and turn it into sugar and then replenish it. So we do want to add some carbs after our workout. You don't need to eat a lot, um, but you do need some. And I would recommend 300 to 400 calories, although some people might only want to do 200. To be honest, you don't have to get this specific as long as you're eating anything it's going to be beneficial. But uh, chocolate milk is really good. So what this has is a ratio of carbs to protein of four to one. So four grams of carbs, one gram of protein. And in my opinion, 20 to 30 grams of protein is going to be sufficient. So then you're looking at, you know, like 100 grams of carbs. And, um, you know, you can do a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, an apple and peanut butter, uh, cliff bars, uh, your drinks, you know, your post-workout drinks. I Some post-workout drinks are starting to get rid of carbs because of the low carb fad. I'm not a fan of that. I think you should keep carbs in there. So, um, yep. All right. Let me, um, okay, I'll, ask a few, I'll answer a few more. Uh, would we start with just body weight exercises just because they're easier or could we start with dumbbells if you have them at home? Oh, definitely. Yeah. So, uh, I just did body weight because a lot of people are just at home now and it's hard to get resources. But yeah, dumbbells are going to be really good because you can add some weight. So yeah, I would recommend using those at home. And the reason why I started it at home is because the gym can be intimidating. And this is kind of a beginner lift video. So, you know, be dumb and mess up in your in privacy so you're not um, getting, you know, afraid to go to the gym. Do your thing because you're going to be terrible at it. A good way to think about it is anytime you're trying to new, do something new, you got to be bad at it before you can get good at it. So you got to do it terribly first in order to someday do it better. Okay, uh, what is the best warm-up exercises, stretches before... Oh, I skipped one. We'll go with this, so. Best warm-up exercises, stretching before lifting. So for your warm-up, let me grab a new sheet here. You guys ask some good questions. So for this warm-up, when you're doing a warm-up, cardio is really good, and it's hard to beat cardio. The reason why things are are cardiovascular is because they're using big muscle groups and they're requiring lots of blood flow and lots of oxygen and that typically means that your body temp oh if I could spell body temp rises and we want to get a light sweat going for that so I do anything sometimes I go for a bike ride sometimes I will go for a run sometimes I don't want to do any cardio so I'll just do light lifts like super lightweight higher rep and just kind of go quickly between a few sets like if I'm going to do squats that day I'll just take the bar do some easy squats maybe do some bear crawls, maybe do some easy bench, just to get a light sweat, and then I start my lift. So uh, stretching is actually not effective before your body temperature is warmed up. So I would do your, your warm up, and then I would do a light stretch, and then I would lift. That's kind of how I would set that up. Or you could stretch afterwards, but if you need to like open up your hips before you do deep squats or something, do your warm up, then start doing that stretching to kind of open up, and then start doing your lift. After lifting workouts, or are lifting workouts necessarily good for losing body weight? Yes. So when you increase your muscle mass, let's say muscle here, you actually increase the amount of calories you burn every single day by about uh, 30 to 50, somewhere between there, calories per pound of muscle mass built. So what this means is let's say over a year, you build 10 pounds of muscle. This now means that every day, you are burning 300 to 500 extra calories. 500 might be a little extreme there. Let's say 300 extra calories per day, which means if you continue to eat the same amount of food and you did want to lose weight or lose fat mass, um, you are now going to lose one pound every 11 days without doing any extra work. So it's kind of like compound interest. Um, obviously, it's, it's, it takes time to build 10 pounds of muscle and uh, you 
you know, 300 calories is a lot. You might start eating more, but when you think about it, you're building muscle mass. So don't always think about your weight because if you're building muscle mass, it's going to be healthier for you and then you're going to lose the fat mass. So you're just changing body composition. So worry less about what's on the scale and worry about building that lean ma muscle mass because that'll help you lose fat mass long term. Okay, we have a lot of questions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump back into finishing up the weight routine and then I'm going to hit some more questions here so we kind of keep some flow to the video. Okay, so you've done about two months of training at home. You can use dumbbells, whatever you have. Any equipment you have at home is going to be a bonus. I just gave you some workouts without equipment. And so now you want to move into the weight room. So this is a hard step for some people. My recommendation is go there with the feeling that you're going to feel awkward and just don't have high expectations for yourself. So your goal should be to just go to the weight room and then go home because you know you might be embarrassed or whatever but you know as long as you did it you took your first step then you're moving in the right direction the second time you go it's going to feel a lot better so when you do go there start with light weights i see this all the time in weight rooms people go in there and they're just struggling to do bicep curls and they're using their whole body you don't need to do that just go in there find a light weight who knows make it ridiculous uh eight pounds five pounds whatever it is pick up a dumbbell and move it right and uh you also do high reps with this low weight. So you can do, you know, 10 plus, maybe even 20 plus reps. You're just getting used to your new environment, learning how to lift, learning how to do good form. So you can watch form videos, uh, you know, make sure you know some, make sure you find somebody who knows what they're talking about because a lot of people on the internet don't know what they're talking about. So a good rule of thumb, since I'm not going to teach you how to do form, is just do it, do your lifts nice and slow. So three seconds down, one second up. So doing bicep curls, nice and slow down. One, two, three, curl up. One, two, three, curl up. That's gonna teach you some overall muscle control and just build up nice and slow. You're not trying to kill it, but you're just starting out. And again, your gains are gonna be huge from not doing very much if you're just starting. Another tip is to be well balanced. So a push and a pull is what they typically say. So if you're doing bench press or push ups, then you want to do something where you're pulling too. So rows, dumbbell rows, you can do pull-ups. So some kind of pull, some kind of push. The same goes for abs. People overdevelop their abs. They'll do abs all day, but they won't do any lower back exercises. So my rule is, is if you're doing abs that day, you got to do lower back exercises. If you're doing bench that day, you got to do upper back exercises. Of course, if you're like a bodybuilder trying to put on lots of muscle mass, you're probably going to segment your workouts a little different. But uh, for a general beginner, push pull is going to be a good move. Um, also, good tip, if you can find a partner to go with, one, you're going to hold each other accountable. Two, if they know what they're doing, they can help you. So find somebody who already is going to the weight room and see if you can join them. And then three, or six, I guess, is to set realistic goals. So your first day going to the weight room, just go there and do maybe, maybe some body weight stuff and then two lifts or whatever it is. Make your goals super simple so you can just get the ball moving in the right direction. And then what I would recommend in terms of like starting because the machines and all the equipment can be overwhelming. Dumbbells are fairly easy, fairly routine. You don't um, need to have a lot of safety precautions. Obviously don't you know, grab more than you can handle in terms of weight. But if you just hold dumbbells in your hands and then you do lunges, it's just like at home but you're just adding a little bit of weight which will get you more gains. Same with dumbbell bench, right? There's no bar that's really gonna drop on you. So you can do that. Lap pull downs, this is obviously a cable machine, but it's fairly simple. You can look up images online if you don't know. I really like back extension, so that's just to uh, even us out from these dumbbell crunches. So for dumbbell crunches, you can just grab a dumbbell, kind of put it on your chest, curl up. They got uh, uh, crunch machines too, which I really like, but some people aren't fans. Uh, dumbbell calf raises, holding dumbbells in your hand. So this is kind of like a workout routine that you can do in your home with dumbbells. So if you have dumbbells at your house, there you go. Um, and then keep that high rep range as well. Lightweight, high rep range. You only need to do two sets, right? Maybe, maybe you're starting out. Let me throw this up here. Maybe you're just getting started, and so you're going to do a home workout. Let's just call this a home strength routine. And so your first, you know, when you're first starting, you're just doing three home routines, let's say. Super simple, right? Less than five minutes. Obviously, it's not ideal and it's not how much you should be doing, but it's better than nothing. And then, let's say eventually, you know, we get out of lockdown and you can go to the weight room one day. There you go. Keep your home routine. 
go to the weight room one day, start getting used to it. Eventually you'll get rid of this. Go to the weight room that day. You can add cardio on these off days. If you don't want to do that, you can do cardio for your warm up. Maybe a 20 minute jog for that warm up, a 30 minute bike for this one. And then, you know, maybe you want to do weights and then you want to do a hit training afterwards. So you do like, you know, uh, 30 seconds on, 30 seconds easy, times six or whatever it is. So you can kind of figure out how you want to do that. Uh, and then as you go, you want to switch up these workouts as well because they might start to get boring. So what you start doing is you think, okay, I'm going to go do some machine lifts because machines are really nice too because they make things easier. If you go to the machines, there's all kinds of videos online of people using machines incorrectly and they're trying to get into them weird. When you get to a machine, just kind of stay calm. Uh, don't jump right on it. Take your time, walk around the machine, look at it a little bit. What you're going to see is that they're there are sometimes instructions on the side of how to get into the machine. A lot of times, even me at the weight room, I'll go in there, I'll sit down on the machine, and then I'm all trapped, and I don't know how to actually use it. i got to get off and then look at the machine. You feel dumb, but whatever. That's how life is. So, you know, start looking at machines. Uh, I have leg press here. One of the reasons why I put leg press on here is because when you're doing leg press, make sure you don't lock your knees. So anytime you're lifting heavy weight and you lock your knees, uh, what can happen is if you have enough weight, so let's say your knee bends this way normally, right? You're doing leg press. You lock your knees and your knees maybe hyperextend a little bit with lots of weight, your knee can actually bend the wrong way. And so uh, be aware of that because that is not going to be a good day for you. There are videos online if you're into uh, watching that. Um, that'll scare you enough to know to never lock your knees when you're doing leg press. You know, they got bench press machines, they got rows, row machines, you can do bicep curls on a machine, tricep pull downs. They do have machines, but a, a cable machine is better. You can do calf raises. They do have some machines, but you know, um, you don't have to have a full machine workout, right? But just some exercises to get used to it before you start doing free weights and, and barbells and stuff. This is kind of how I would start in a weight room. Okay, I'm going to do the step four real quick, and then I'll get to your questions. So once you've maybe done actually this workout here, this stuff for a month, maybe two months, and you're getting really comfortable, uh, you might have found a partner in the weight room, or if you have a partner, uh, and you want to start moving to some more complex stuff, uh, you're going to have to start thinking of safety a lot more. And that's why I like to have a partner um, who has been in there. A good tip is if you go to the weight room at the same time every day, eventually you might start to meet people. And then you could maybe get a partner in the weight room because people will be down to help you if you need a spotter or if you have questions. People are pretty friendly if you ask them. And eventually, you know, that's how you can make friends is, you know, you want to get started lifting weights, but none of your friends do and you can't convince them to. We'll go to the weight room then and make some new friends because then they can help you out there. Um, practicing the barbell. So this is a long you know, bench press thing that people do. A few things to note on there is make sure you're using proper form because when you start loading up weight, you can injure yourself. Um, another thing is you want to have a closed grip. So like this. Sometimes when people are doing bench, they'll keep their hands like that. And what this can do is sometimes that bar can slip off and then it crushes your throat and that's not a good time. So uh, make sure anytime you have weight above your head that could fall, you have a closed grip. That's going to help you out. Um, if you are lifting heavy, let's say you're benching for the first time, find somebody to spot you. You can just go up to somebody, ask them you know, to give you a spot. Most people don't know how to spot correctly. Just if you are spotting for bench, you're keeping your hands like this, a bar on, hand on top and a hand on bottom. You're obviously not touching it and you're going down with the person. Um, so, you know, Make sure the person knows how to spot you if you are moving heavy weight, but even just to practice. So, you know, you just feel a little bit safe there. You got somebody to catch that bar if you slip up. And what you can start doing is you can start increasing the weight and decreasing the reps. So uh, my tip for this is if you're trying to build muscle, which is what most people's goal is, your muscle building range, rep range, we call it hypertrophy, is 8 to 12 reps, hypertrophy. So this means you're lifting heavy enough to only be able to do eight to 12 reps. Now, this isn't the only way to build muscle. Your at-home workouts where you're doing 20 reps are still gonna build muscle, but this is gonna maximize your muscle growth. And so what I like to do once I'm starting to get a little bit more intense in the weight room is I'll just grab a random weight. Let's say I grab a 10 pound dumbbell and I can lift it 10 times, let's say, before I'm fully out, right? I'm doing bicep curls, I lift it 10 times, and now I can't lift it anymore. Put it down, do another set later, I'll lift it and I can do Let's do eight this time, and maybe I'm really fatigued now. So I'm gonna grab an eight pound dumbbell, and then I lift it 11 times, perfect. As I start doing this, I'll go back into the weight room, and let's say next time I 
lift 10 pounds and I do it 15 times. All right, so I'm lifting, I'm able to handle that 10 pound weight. So what I'll do next is I'll grab a 12 pound and then now I can do it 12 times, sweet. I'll do 12 pounds again and then I will do, then I do 10. So what I do is I increase the weight after I can do 12 reps. Once I can do 12 reps, then I go up in weight. So eventually, you know, this is gonna be 20 pounds here and you're gonna be doing 10 reps, 12 reps. Once you get to 12, add five pounds, do 25, 25 uh, pounds for however many reps. You might start at, maybe you add a 25 pound dumbbell and you can do it, let's say you can only do it six times when you start, six reps. Well, good, do that for a while. Pretty soon you're gonna be able to do that 12 reps and you get to 30 pounds. So that's a really easy way to kind of progress. Okay, and then one more thing on this is when you are starting to integrate like barbell or some new lifts, don't make it the focus of your workout. So make it part of your warm up. So just practice some squat form, do some light squats for your warm up, maybe some light bench for your warm up where it's almost a joke. You could lift the weight like 40 times maybe. And they do have lighter barbells in some weight rooms if you don't like the 45 pound barbell because that's what your typical barbell weighs is, is 45 pounds. And then after you do this little warm up, you're just practicing form there. Then you get into your actual workout and you can make it up however you want. And again, we created those cheat sheets online. So you should be able to just, okay, I want to work out my legs. What's a leg workout? I want to work out my chest. What's a chest workout? And just pull and make up your own workout. Okay, so we have a ton of questions. So now I'm going to start going over those. All right. Where are we at? Lifting. Okay, so how does it help? take does it help to take whey protein after workouts yes it does so whey protein has all of your essential amino acids it's actually really good um, it's your fastest absorbable protein I also like to add a little casein so milk has whey and casein in it and so I like to do a little bit of both because casein is slow absorbing so you don't need both but a lot of your uh, supplements are gonna have both and yeah whey, whey protein is probably the most premium in my opinion. Okay, um, and it's very affordable, so it's not, it's not a terrible price. You can find some good deals out there. Uh, is cardio or strength training more important for weight loss? Um, I would say they are equally important for weight loss and for health. So again, let me switch this over here. Your standard recommendations is 150 minutes of cardio, and you're gonna be burning fat during this cardio. Uh, so cardio is really good, keeps your heart healthy, and cardio actually improves your efficiency at burning fat mass. So we do increase our fat burning here. We are burning just direct calories. Um, but I really like weightlifting as well. The general recommendation is two times a week because you are increasing muscle mass, which one, is motivating because you start looking better, and two, um, you're going to burn more calories overall. So this kind of works low-key in the background when you're not exercising, you're actually gonna be burning more. So you kinda of need both. Think of this as going to work and making, making money. So you're going to do cardio and you're burning calories directly. And again, it's about 100 calories per mile if you're trying to convert it to mileage. Um, if you're biking, it's about 30 calories per mile. And then for this, this lifting is kind of like investing. So you go to work to burn some calories and then you go or you go to cardio to burn some calories and then you go lift weights to invest in future burned calories. All right, that's a good way to explain it. All right, good question. So, do you think you should have more cardio workouts or more strength training or equal? Uh, it depends on your goals. So for a lot of people, you can do like a cross between them. So if you do, um, what are they called? Like circuit training, right? Uh, how do I spell this? Circuit training, there we go where you're kind of mixing strength and cardio. So you could be doing like push-ups, squats, burpees, jumping jacks, that kind of stuff. You're blending the world, the, the two worlds a little bit. So theoretically you need, I mean, these days could be probably 30 to 45 minutes of strength is probably what you're doing if you're doing it two days a week at the minimum amount and you're lifting pretty quickly. And so technically that's almost the same amount of time. It's a little bit lower, but if you do want to spend more time in the weight room, I would just add some speed element to your workout so your heart rate's up there, and then that's gonna cross over and be cardio work as well. So it doesn't always have to be one or the other, you can blend them. 
and uh, yeah, however you like to do it. Um, my girlfriend, she does CrossFit and it's called Murph or something where you're just doing a lot of exercises as fast as you can get them done. Not my favorite. I hate that type of training, but some people love that stuff. So however you do it, however you're consistent at lifting or working out in general, getting that heart rate up, then you're going to be good. You don't need to worry about it too much. But if your goal is to build muscle, maybe you do it four times a week, right? And then you just add a little bit of extra warm up in the beginning or add some cardio element to your lift. Good question. Okay. Um, I guess from basically asked. Oh yeah. But you guys asked it differently and I gave different explanations. So good. Does increased protein help with better, quicker results? Uh, potentially. If you're not eating enough protein, then yes. But if you are already are eating enough protein, then probably not. And the amount of protein you need is, well, at max capacity is 1.8 grams per kilogram of body weight. And to get kilograms, it is pounds divided by 2.2 equals kilograms. Most people in the U.S. are going to eat enough protein. Make sure you have all nine essential amino acids. So meat, dairy, eggs, those kind of things are going to for sure have all nine essential amino acids. Soy has it as well. And then if you're vegan or vegetarian, you got to find your own little mix there. But for the most part, most people are eating enough protein in their diet already. Um, make sure you eat it right after your workout, and then you can have a meal within the next two to five hours of your workout to get extra protein synthesis. So think about timing of your meals. Eating after your workout is a good time typically for muscle growth and muscle synthesis. Do you recommend also eating before lift or just after? Uh, so in terms of blood sugar, so blood sugar, let's just call it BS, there we go. After you eat, your blood sugar is going to spike, and this is not ideal. And so um, if you work out right afterwards, you're going to decrease that blood sugar spike, which I do recommend. You can stand or walk around or do whatever you want. So, And if you do eat right, out, right before your workout, you'll still kind of be absorbing those calories afterwards. So I think you can do either one. Some people don't like lifting before their workout. Some people do. You know, uh, either way really works, in my opinion. So... In your opinion, what is the best cool down exercise after lifting? So stretching is pretty good just to kind of loosen everything up. I'm not a huge fan of stretching because if you stretch too hard, it does make you more sore because you're technically doing tiny micro tears to your muscles. Um, but, you know, just a general, I, I don't cool down as much as I should. Typically, I just ride my bike to the gym and then ride home. And the point of a cool down is just to kind of re-loosen up, recirculate some blood fo flow for some better recovery. So, you know, a short, light bike. Uh, even a walk works, a little bit of stretching, maybe a yoga session, um, whatever you want to do, really. I think it's, I think it's all, a I think it's all beneficial. And should you be stretching after your workout? I never know if I should just before or before and after. So don't stretch before you lift because you got to be warm before you actually exercise. So, or before your stretching is effective. So if you want to stretch before your lift, do your warm up and then do your stretching routine and then start lifting. And uh, if you're doing a long stretching routine, what I would do is your warm up, then maybe a light stretch, your workout, and then a longer stretch. That would be my recommendation. Because uh, if you think about lifting as well, um, especially if you're doing like large compound movements, you're actually stretching during that process. Because if you think about your, your bicep here, people typically don't have tight biceps. So, you know, but maybe picture this as your hamstring. And if you're, you know, moving that muscle, when you're, when you're contracting, you're actually pulling your muscle fibers together like this. And then when you're relaxing, you're actually stretching those out. So if you're doing full range uh, activity, you're actually doing some stretching um, in that process. So I'm a big fan of that. Uh, and then, yeah, and then hit a good stretch session if that's what you're looking for. Once you're already warmed up after your workout is what I suggest. What stretches are most important for lifting exercises? Well, that's a hard question. It depends on the person because... Everybody has different tightnesses. So, um, tightnesses, that's a good word. I uh, made it up. Okay. Um, hips tend to be tight on people. So, I would recommend opening up your hips. So, kind of getting down and squatting and just opening up your hip area. Um, I like leg circles where I get down on all fours and I rotate my leg. If you think about it as my shoulder joint, this is my hip joint, all the way around, nice and slow and wide. You're just kind of using those muscles and opening them up full range of motion again. Um, lower back can be tight, so you know you can do some like good mornings or whatever where you're, you're rolling up and then arms up and arms down. Uh, a lot of people are tight in their chest because we sit on our computers all day, so I would suggest you know 
doing going into a corner, putting your hands on the wall, stretching out like that. Um, those are just some general tightnesses, calves sometimes for people. So it just depends on what you're tight, uh, what's tight, right? And then how you want to fix that. So, um, do you have any recommendations to help someone not lose gains when only have yoga ball, one medium workout band, five dumbbell yoga mat at home, COVID close the gyms? Yeah. So you got lots of stuff. Um, I would uh, use that that document that we created. I can actually pull it up here. So this right here, I would think about using because uh, what I would do is I would make a little database. So I would go and look up uh, medicine ball exercises, right, for, for your legs, for your lower back, for your chest, and then just have type up into that little document or write it on a sheet of paper, a little database, and then same with your dumbbells and uh, same with your bands, right? And then you have a little database that you've already created. And then when you go to do your workout, you just, uh, actually I have the sheet right here. So like I did here, so you want to work out your legs, pick a leg workout, right? You've already wrote it down on a sheet, so pick your leg workout. You want to do some chest, pick a chest workout, right? And if you have that database, then it makes it nice and easy. Um, so yeah, if you're doing that stuff, you can maintain your gains. Another key for that is to try to do explosive movements. So if you're doing really heavy bench, since you don't have that weight anymore, you can actually do explosion. So you know, rocky push-ups where you clap. I don't like to clap. I just try and explode as high as I can. You can do broad jumps, box jumps. So adding that speed element and that explosion is a good way to do things without uh, lots of equipment or lots of weight. So uh, it's kind of changing up your routine a little bit and adjusting to your environment. Um, so that's, that's what I would recommend. Okay, uh, I do a push-pull split. Is there a particular split that you believe is better or is it just whatever fits your schedule and goals? Yeah, there's no like one size fits all. So my general rule is if I do chest, I do upper back. If I do abs, I do lower back, and then uh, that, that pretty much keeps me balanced. So that's what I would suggest. Just if you do a push, do a pull, right? If you do two pushes, do two pulls. Or if you do all pushes on one day, do all pulls the next day, something like that. Do you recommend band training specifically for the knees for squats? Oh yeah, so with squatting, uh, it takes some work to get really good form, and bands can be really helpful. One thing about squats is you want your knees uh, to be pressing out a little bit, and so you can train that strength with some bands with different exercises. Uh, bands, you can get really good workouts with bands, especially like hip workouts if you put them on both legs. They're the band around both legs. So I would suggest the same thing. Look up a bunch of band exercises and then just create a little database so you have all those written down. So you have your leg band exercises. You have maybe a chest band exercise. Uh, you know, some of these abs it's, it can be hard, but you don't need bands to do abs. So... Um, yeah, but for training bands, I'm a big fan, especially, uh, for developing like smaller muscles and getting ri rid of little weaknesses. I'm a, I'm a huge fan. Are you, are vegan protein shakes also good for you post or pre-workout in comparison to whey protein? I can't have dairy, so I've been using vegan ones. Okay. So if you're doing a whey protein shake, I don't believe there's lactose in it. So you might be able to have it if you still can't have whey. Um, it's going to depend on the vegan protein. So the problem with supplements is there is no governing body that actually uh, makes sure that the supplement has what it actually says it has. That doesn't mean that they're not going to have the correct things. But with vegan proteins, if they're doing it properly, they should be mixing a bunch of vegan proteins to where you have all your essential amino acids. Because the thing about being a vegan is you can get all your essential amino acids from plants. You just have to have a good variety. So I would look into making sure that it has all, um, all nine essential amino acids. And if it has that and it seems like a reputable company, then you're probably good. And it's probably almost just as good as whey. Um, maybe not as good, but it'll be good enough. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry about uh, breaking your veganism or, or whatever uh, for whey protein for the slight gains if there are any. So I think, I think vegan protein would be, would be decent. Um, is yoga good too? Yeah, so let's read the, is yoga good to help you get back into working out? I have been using it at home, getting better handstands, holding poses and such. Will it help me retain some small muscles? Yeah, so yoga is good. Uh, it's not going to be, it depends on what your goals are, right? If you enjoy yoga and you're having a good time and um, it's helping you out, then yes, continue doing it. You know, it's not going to increase your maximum 
strength or your maximum power at all but you don't need to be doing that for most people that's that's kind of unnecessary so yeah uh, yoga is good it helps you loosen up it can calm you down it can make you stronger um, and yeah it's just different goals right if your goal is to become the world's strongest person then yoga is a great routine I like to do yoga that has some some push-up elements in it and some strength elements but there's lots of yoga moves that are way too difficult for me to even do so yeah yoga is good I'm a big fan so I would not stop doing yoga if you're enjoying your yoga routines okay so that is all the questions um, we are done here thanks for watching and I got one more video coming up uh, at 3 on exercise motivation it should be a shorter video so if you're interested stop by for that it'll be kind of good I think and I'm gonna hang out for two more or for any more questions for two more minutes but other than that you guys are free to go thanks for watching